Do you have any thoughts to offer up on the works of Ayn Rand and objectivism? Sure. I, I, yeah, you've talked about this a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I know you said we said we were going to try to work a sit down with your own book. Yeah, which I think would be fun. Yeah, so, yeah, so I know your own's been critical of my of my yeah. terminology of capitalism, where I've said that it's forced altruism because anytime you say the word altruism in the presence of an objectivist, then it's, 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 it's like yeah. water on the on the Wicked Witch of the yeah. West. They just start melting, and it's all crazy. But what I mean by forced altruism is the sense that you, if if I don't give you something that you want, then I starve. Meaning that there is an externality to me, to me living that I have to generate for you in order for me to get something in return. So whether you use altruism or not, we have the same perspective on on capitalism. Uh, I think that on capitalism, there's been very there's very. Well, let me just let me just say something right there uh, before before we continue uh, on this. I, I I like the analogy to me being the wicked witch of the West. Uh, I guess I behave when he says altruism. I behave like the Wicked Witch of the West would behave if you pour water on her. Not sure what to make of that, but uh, so be it. Kind of fun, uh, kind of funny, um, but uh, it kind of ridiculous as well. There's a reason why we get upset when, we t when altruism is raised. And the reason is that Ben Shapiro and everybody else use the term incorrectly. They use the term wrong. What he is referring to is trade. What he is referring to is selling somebody a product and getting something in return. What he is referring to is a win-win transaction. There's no altruism there. So what is altruism? Well, go and read Augustine Comte. Go and read the guy who came up with the term. You're an intellectual. You don't get your terminology right. You're a guy who says facts don't care about your feelings. I agree with you completely. So go check out the facts. What does altruism mean? Altruism means living for other people. It means giving up your life and living for the purpose of other people's satisfaction, happiness, fulfillment of whatever, wishes, needs. It's the placement of other people's needs above your own life, above your own values, above your own wishes. It's not about trading. Capitalism is not about altruism. And I know he gets this from um, uh, for the famous economist whose name always slips from my mind and has just done it again. See, Ben is 31, so nothing slips from his mind. In that sense, I am jealous uh, because I, I, I get the brain freezes. He doesn't because he's still young. I, I think I got the brain freezes when I was his age as well. But anyway, um, so what you get here is, is a misconception on his part of what altruism means, which is very, very dangerous. Because what is he doing? He's creating a package deal under altruism. He's putting on altruism, one, trade, trade under capitalism, and two, Jesus on the cross, sacrifice, real self-sacrifice, giving up your values for other people and getting nothing in return. All of that goes lumped in together. And then altruism, you know, can be anything, right? It can be helping out your neighbor because you like your neighbor, or it could be jumping on the grenade because, you, you know, because you're a good sacrifice and you have to be moral. It could be, you know, giving up all, you're giving up a kidney for a stranger because, because their life is more valuable than yours. Altruism becomes meaningless. The term becomes meaningless. What's the point of having it if it includes all these different things? So the important thing is to know exactly what altruism is. Well, altruism is the placement of the well-being of other people above your life. Their lives are more important than yours. Indeed, According to altruism, your moral purpose in life is the other, other people. That's why it's otherism, altruism. So Ben, you're smart, but use terms correctly. Do a little bit of research if you're going to criticize Ayn Rand. Never mind if, you know, never mind me, but if you're going to criticize Ayn Rand, do a little bit of research. All right, we're going to continue uh, with Ben's. Uh, he's going to now go into capitalism, and he's going to give Ayn Rand a compliment. You 
expositors of capitalism who I think are better than Ayn Rand. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as her life philosophy uh, and her relationship philosophy, I think that's pretty garbage. Uh, I, I don't think objectivism applies in personal relationships. Now, the way that a lot of objectivists get around the idea that like you're going to abandon your wife and children because there's a hot chick at the bar, uh, the because objectivists well, they would say that's not rational self-interest, right? right? So they'll re they'll redefine the terminology, right? They'll say that you're not making a sacrifice for your wife and children. You've made a decision that it makes you happier to be with your wife and children, and the rational person would make that decision that it's better to be with your wife and children. A lot of 40-year-old men driving Corvettes would disagree, right? So, this, so I, I really don't think that's correct. I think. I, that, I, I wonder if they disagree or they just have a moment of stupidity. I mean, you know? maybe, but you know, it's the president's been married three times, each time to a, to a younger, hotter model. Model, so it's you know, I right. think that uh, they, I have less faith in in human nature than to believe that the reason I stick with my wife and kids is because it always makes me happy. There's plenty of times when I'm with a screaming child in the middle of the night, when what would best serve my interests is to thrust the child <laughs> upon my wife and go drinking. So. Right. Uh, all right. Well, we'll facilitate that. Oh, uh, you know, at, at some point when you guys. Well, I mean, uh, what's nice here is um, Ben has agreed to, to debate me. Hopefully, he'll still be willing to do that uh, in the future, and, or, or to sit down and discuss it. We don't have to have a formal debate. It would be a nice conversation to have. But I wish I was there. I wish I was there because I'd love to ask Ben Shapiro why he stays with his wife. There are a lot of hot chicks out there. Why does he stay with his wife? I guess their answer is because God told him to. Because it's a great sacrifice to stay with his wife and sacrifice is good. Is that why you should stay with your wife? Because it's good to sacrifice? No objectivist has ever claimed that every moment of a relationship is going to be blissful and orgasmic, that they're never going to be tough times. But if you're rationally self-interested, and that's not a redefinition of term, that's what self-interest means, not the momentary. If, if living, if a 50-year-old, if life in a Corvette and sleeping around and being a playboy was really better than sticking with a wife you love and a family you adore, then yeah, then we should all be driving Corvettes, all us men at least, should be driving Corvettes and having a good time. Whoops, I forgot to switch cameras back. See, this is the problem. But <laughs> that's the point, that it isn't better, at least for some of us now, if you have a lousy marriage, yes, please get divorced. If you don't love your wife, please get divorced. But what would, they, what would, what would uh, uh, Ben say? No. You can't get divorced. If you don't love your wife, stick it out. You got to sacrifice. Why? I don't know. For the kids. What if the kid's out of the house? I don't know. Because God said so. Divorce is bad. I, I'd love to ask him about King David and his many wives, or King Solomon with his 2,000 wives and, and mistresses. I wonder how ben, Ben's wife would think about that. Anyway, it, it's just the whole idea of that self-interest means immediate gratification. That is just silly from somebody who who's claims to be an advocate of reason. He has, you know, think about it, Ben. <laughs> right? Think about it. Self-interest, happiness, is not about instant gratification. It's not about being short-term. It's about reason. And Ayn Rand talks about this over and over and over again. She doesn't redefine selfishness. She defines it properly for the first time. Because she understands what it means to live a pro-human life life. Not live a life of emotionalism. Not live a, a life of instant gratification. Not live a life where if anything's hard, you just walk away. I mean, have you read Ayn Rand's books? Dagny faces difficulties all the time and she sticks with them, not out of a sense of duty, not out of a sense of selflessness, not out of a sense of self-sacrifice, but out of a deep, deep, deep sense of selfishness. Dagny is selfish and therefore she sticks with her values and fights for them and overcomes difficult situations. You don't not abandon your children because it's hard. You stay with your kids 
because they're a value to you. And for values, I mean, if you're an objectivist, you know that there's nothing more important than your values. You fight for them hard. You don't sacrifice for them. If it's a little value, an insignificant value, and it's hard, you drop it. You move on to something else. But if it's a massive value in your life, or it's an obligation that you've taken on yourself, like raising your kids, you pursue that value to the fullest, to its utmost. You don't just walk away. I mean, that's absurd. And he has to know that that's absurd. There's no way somebody as smart as Ben, who's read Ayn Rand, doesn't know the absurdity of what he's saying. So he, he is creating a caricature because it is a threat to his system. Indeed, I believe that Ayn Rand is the only threat to his system. Now, what I've noticed, and I'm going to take, I've got a couple of calls here, I'm assuming these new callers are calling about Ben Shapiro, because otherwise, because I've said it so many times. But um, if you think about, if you, anytime it goes very philosophical, you know, again, Ben is very mixed. So I saw him on uh, Sam Harris. And Ben has the right view on free will. He believes it exists. But he doesn't understand what free will is. Again, he could benefit enormously, enormously from Ayn Rand. Because Ayn Rand has the right approach to free will. And if you don't know Ayn Rand's approach to free will, then listen to my interview with Ankar Gatte from a few weeks ago, uh, or a few a couple of months ago, on free will. It's on Blog Talk Radio, and it's on YouTube. So please go and listen to it, because it's a, it's a, for anybody interested in the issue of free will, it is a must listen to. But free will is an incredibly important topic. You have to know what you're talking about. And the problem is he doesn't. He's very, very superficial philosophically. Because for him, free will is something granted by God, and there is no, no explanation really for it. So, when, so he comes off when talking to um, Sam Harris, it's just less deep than Sam, even though Sam, I think, on free will is, is, is you know, what he says is completely wrong. And, and Ben calls him on it because Sam keeps talking about choices and decisions. And, 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 and Ben keeps saying, wait a minute, don't you need free will for all of that? And Sam says, no, you don't need free will, but, but, which is nonsense. Of course you do. So uh, Sam wants to have his cake and eat it. He wants to have choices. He wants people to make decisions. He wants to have reason, but not have free will somehow. I don't know what the cake is there. He, he just wants both of those opinions to be in his mind at the same time. And that's a whole problem. Uh, it's a whole problem uh, with, uh, with Sam Harris. Uh, 